This is an example of how to use inheritance inside of uh, Inhydrate model. Now, databases don't normally uh, handle inheritance. They just handle data. So what Inhydrate has done is actually, the model has actually been built in such a way that you can derive one object from another object, a single inheritance, just like C-sharp is, such that when it's generated, you will get derived objects that actually inherit from other objects, just like C-sharp supports. Now, it essentially turns your database into an object base. And the way it does that is that it, you will derive, you will, you will take the common properties of many tables and derive them into a single table that you will call your base table. So uh, the regular Northwind database has a customer table and an employee table. However, they both have first name, last name, yada, yada, yada. So what you really want to do is you want to derive a system user table and we'll put the common properties like address, city, state, uh, first name, last name, all the things that employee and a customer have, and we'll put them in that particular table. We will give it a user ID primary key. It will be a database identity. Now, we'll come up to customer table. Now, notice customer table doesn't have first name and last name or any of those other common properties. We've defined company name and title in customer. Now, the parent table of customer will be set to system user. Now, you can set it to anything in here. I've set it to uh, system user. And the only caveat is that you have to have the exact same primary key as the base table. Because in C-sharp, it's going to be the exactly the same field, so it has to be named the same thing. So uh, we have user ID defined here. The only difference is this is not a, uh, where is it, the identity. This is not a database identity because uh, because then the identities would get out of sync because you basically have two tables with two identities and they could very well get out of sync. They will necessarily get out of sync if you have more than one child table derived from system user, which we do, uh, like employee, which also has a user ID primary key for employee. So you just make sure that if this is an integer and the other one happens to be a database identity, this one is not. So. The only other condition you must meet is that the relationships must relate up. The system user is the parent table, and it relates to the customer, employee, and supplier table. And we look at the column relationships, and we will notice that they are from user ID to user ID, from system user to customer. That is from also from the primary key here to the primary key here. So because essentially what you've done is split out the fields into two different tables, but they have the, sa the same primary key. We've done the same thing for employee, its parent table system user, and the same thing for supplier, its table is its parent table is system user. Now, notice that so the customer only has a code and a company name. So let's generate this project. Now let's compile. Okay. Now I've created a test application console application here. So what we're going to do here is look at the customer uh, object. I've already written the code. So we do this. We compile. Everything compiles just fine. Now what we've done is we have a customer collection and I actually run a static method on the customer collection called run select. This actually will return every single customer inside of the customer table. Um, it's just a shortcut to get all the data. There's various other ways to query data. This is just a very simple way to get everything. So I happen to know I already have greater than zero items inside of this collection, so I'm just going to grab the first one. This is obviously just a list. You give it an index. I get the first one. So I, uh, this customer, if you will notice, do that. Now, remember, customer had code and company name in it, right? But also, if you'll notice, we do the first name. Customer has a first name on it. It also has a code on it. It also has a last name on it. It has all the things that system user has and uh, that the customer table has. So this compiles just fine. There's actually no way for me to know whether first name comes from the system user table or the customer table. I don't care because whenever I query this, it will all come back from the database with all the data as if it were one big table, which is exactly what you want it to be inside of code. You don't want to go through the housekeeping of keeping up which table goes to where. When you save it, you update it, you delete it. All that is handled automatically. All you have, all you do is worry about customers. You never. Ma uh, manipulate the system user object itself.